The following educational video presents critical incidents drawn from the real practice of facilitating problem-solving groups, common situations a facilitator may have to face, contrasting bad and good performance are depicted. Useful tips and lessons drawn from each situation are suggested. This educational video also aims to serve as a refresher training method, allowing the participants in the Flourish training to maintain team facilitation skills even with limited opportunities for practice. So, this is our objective. How to obtain knowledge transfer within the organization. So let's hear some obstacles to this objective. Okay, please. Uh, well, I'd say one obstacle with lack of strategy for uh, knowledge sharing. Correct. Anything else? Uh, I would think that a lack of empathy between employees might be a problem. Well, oh, interesting. Uh, young people uh, are not famous because of empathy. <laughs> I, it's funny you say that. Okay, do you have anything else? Well, I think we need to address the hostility between the newcomers and the experienced employees. Hostility. A woman would say that hostility, of course. Anything else? If I may, I would think that the exchanging of know-how might be time-consuming. Okay, okay. But first, let's hear opinion of an experienced manager, please. Well, in my point of view. In this situation, we can clearly see that the facilitator is not listening to minority employees and or those of lower strata in the company. He wrongfully thinks that only those with more experience on the upper echelons should be listened to and are capable of coming up with ideas that can solve the issue. And pay attention, always keep the whiteboard carefully clean. Unnecessary or blurred information can be a distractor that influences participants' attention and memory. So this is our objective, how to obtain more knowledge transfer within the organization. Can you please tell me examples of obstacles that prevent the organization to have more knowledge transfer? Well, I'd say one obstacle will be the lack of uh, strategy uh, for knowledge sharing. Right. You're right. That's, uh, anything else? Very important. And? I think another one would definitely be the lack of empathy between employees. Yeah, you're right. More suggestions? I think we need to address the hostility between the newcomers and the experienced employees. Of course. Yes, this whole problem of <coughs> hostility between newcomers and uh, veterans. Anything else? Uh, I, I would think that an exchange of know-how might be time-consuming as well. You're right. Company. Very time-consuming. Anything else? Well, uh... All participants in the group must have the same opportunities for participation. All participants can give valuable contributions to the discussion. All points of view must be heard and considered. We are here to use a problem-solving method that aims at identifying the problem and after draws the action plan to solve it. During problem definition, first the group must enumerate all possible obstacles. Then, each group member will choose the two most important definitions and when everyone has chosen, the facilitator will ask everyone to justify the choices. 
Let us start with an abstract situation. Thank you. Please read this paper slip. And try to be concise and straight to the point. Okay. Admissions are out. Directors do not talk to each other. And the production director doesn't want to leave her. She is really interested in marketing and motivated in production, but director, no. And there is a lack of regulation for this kind of situation. In this situation, the facilitator is not being dynamic and, therefore, isn't capturing the interest and attention of the trainees. He, she speaks in a monotone voice and doesn't use body language. This causes the trainees to lose focus, feel tired and bored. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you know, we are here to uh, develop a problem-solving situation. As you can see here, so we have the objective concerning Monica, and then we have to define the problem. In this first step, you will tell me all possible obstacles that prevent Monica from working in marketing, and then uh, I will ask you to select the most important. Each one of you will make one or two choices so that we'll, we'll uh, be able to define the problem. Everything uh, is okay? Yeah, okay. You mm -hmm. understood? Okay. So, I'm going to give you this paper slip with the situation. That's called the Monica's problem. Please read it carefully. And um, when you feel uh, ready, please tell me what obstacles prevent Monica from working in marketing. Uh, please let me, give me some time to write, okay? Um, have you understood the situation? Yes? yes so, what obstacles prevent Monica from working in marketing? Come on. Admissions are out. Directors do not talk to each other. Perfect. Any other? Uh, the, the production director doesn't want to leave her. She wants to go to marketing and she's demotivated in production, but the director says no. And there is a lack of regulation for this kind of situation. That's right. The proper body language can help you establish a better connection to participants and keep them engaged. The proper body language can support you when the group starts losing their energy. So, what do you think is the problem that your organization is facing now? Well, I think that uh, the problem is what steps may be taken to create a new and more favorable law. And what are the steps needed to change the existing law? Uh, anyone else? Mm, what about what are the steps necessary to get lawyers interested in changing this law? Allowing and encouraging the team to suggest problems and solutions that are beyond their capabilities is a disservice to the team. What do you think is the problem that the organization is facing now? 
Well, maybe the problem is what steps may be taken to create a new and more favorable law. And also, what are the steps needed to change the existing law? Okay, so these are really good problems, but still outside the scope of the organization. So we need to have suggestions, problems that we as an organization can solve. So any other suggestions? Well, maybe another problem is uh, what steps can be taken to overcome the inconveniences set by the new law. Perfect. So this solves the ownership problem. So we can have issues like this uh, that we can uh, uh, solve with these kind of suggestions. Anyone else? Yes, and what are the steps needed to continue the business without failing to comply with uh, this new law? Yes, yes, okay, so this is the, the, the kind of suggestion that we want, okay? Issues that we can address as on the organization. Any problems and solutions that do not comply with the ownership requirement, i.e. the group having the means to control the execution, are doomed to fail. The meeting is taking longer than expected, isn't it? Indeed. What is going on? This is rather unusual. We tend to have these meetings perfectly on time. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know this is taking longer indeed, but uh, we, we still need to discuss Monica's problem. Uh, so she wants to go to marketing and her employer doesn't want her to go. Um, so how, how can this be addressed? Um, well, uh, maybe Monica can find some... Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. Just a minute, please. Well, could you please repeat? Okay, Monica can find someone to replace her. Oh. Well, that's a possibility, so shall, let's think about it a little bit more. And anything else? Um, what about hiring internally? That is possible, right? Um, the company has that possibility and didn't put any issues with regard to that. The facilitator apologizes because the meeting took longer than expected. This should not have happened. The facilitator does not address the lack of time and lets team members ramble on instead of going straight to the point. The meeting is taking longer than expected, isn't it? Indeed. I wonder if we'll finish on time. Well. Look at that, time flies. Uh, we will have to adopt some strategies to better take advantage on the time we have left. Please, we shouldn't take longer than we agreed upon. So let's please quickly go over um, Monica's problem. So any suggestions, please? Well, maybe Monica can find someone to replace her in the department and do her job. Yes, yes. What about hiring internally? That's possible, right? Yes, 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 hiring is possible, but could you please go straight to the point as we are short on time? Okay? A meeting being longer than planned is unprofessional and denotes poor facilitation skills. Time management is an important skill for facilitators. Good afternoon. Uh, so, following our previous presentations, let's start by listing uh, obstacles that prevent our company from gathering accurate customer satisfaction data. Who wishes to start? 
Does anyone have suggestions? No, I believe the best uh, place to collect information is in the shop floor. I think it's questionable whether the best place to start would be the shop floor. Does anyone perhaps have any other? Uh, shouldn't we discuss these things and together come up with some suggestions? What you have to understand is I am in charge here. I know what is good for the company and which directions we should be following. The facilitator feels unsure about his or her competency and wants to wield authority as a defense mechanism. However, because of this, he or she disregards and disrespects their employees who could have provided valuable input. Good afternoon. So, following our previous presentations, let's start by listing a series of obstacles that prevent our company from gathering accurate customer satisfaction data. Who wishes to start? I believe the best place to collect this information would be the shop floor. Yes, great idea. The shop floor is always where they would know best. Those uh, working deliveries are never asked for uh, input regarding customer satisfaction. Indeed, we do tend to neglect their input. Perhaps we should definitely create a strategy that could perhaps approach all of them and in the future we... Inexperienced facilitators may be afraid of losing authority if they do not feel in control. They try to show they are incredibly competent and can manage the team. However, due to their own insecurity, they don't engage team members in joint decision making nor do they carry out tasks cooperatively. This may cause rifts and, in the worst case scenario, the group to fall apart. Using the proper behavior techniques in facilitating creative problem solving would solve the situation. Good afternoon. Let us start by listing possible obstacles preventing this company from improving, improving market analysis. Who wants to start? I'm sorry, but I don't know what I'm doing here. I have a lot of work to do. I don't have time to be sitting in meetings. You were designated to participate in this meeting. If you don't, don't want to be here, complain to your manager. But I don't want to complain. I want to know why must I be here. If you don't want to be here, you should leave. And then I will say that you keep miss this meeting. The facilitator does not listen to what the team member says and is afraid of losing authority. Good afternoon. Uh, let us start by listing some uh, opinions about how to improve our market analysis. Who wants to start? I'm sorry, but I don't know what am I doing here. I have a lot of work to do. I don't have time to be sitting in meetings. Are you worried about because of the amount of work that you have to do? And uh, that your past year is keeping, keeping you away from uh, other important things? Yes. Nobody asked me about my workload and my availability to be here. Uh, very well. E, would, it, would it be okay if, you are, if I ask your manager uh, to continue with us? The facilitator must show that he or she listens to objections and drive the team members to find the proper solution. Okay, so uh, today we are going to uh, start practicing the creative problem solving. It's very simple, just four steps, objective, problem, action, plan and action. Let's start with an example, with Monica's dilemma. Please read it and tell me what are the obstacles that prevent Monica from working in marketing. Okay. But Mr. Gomes, you didn't have time to ask questions and I really have to. No time to, to questions. We'll deal with it later. Let's start with Monica's problem. In this situation, the facilitator rushes through the creative problem-solving methodology and the introduction to Monica's problem. 
he doesn't address people's questions. Good morning. Let us start <coughs> Try to explain the cycle of creative problem solving. First, we define the objective. Second, we define the problem. Third, we make the action, the action plan. And last, we have the action itself. Uh, it is better if we illustrate it with a, a situation that uh, we call Monica's Dilemma. Please take a look at it. And we will start by defining the problems. What obstacles prevent Monica from working in marketing? So we are to say whatever problems come to mind when trying to achieve the objective? Exactly. Okay. Well, I think one problem is the company can't hire anyone else. All right. Anything else? Well, another is that Monica's boss can't have her place empty. Her work still needs doing. Perfect. Take your time exploring the methodology and the topic, otherwise they will be confused and it will be impossible to apply the creative problem-solving methodology correctly. So, can you tell me about Monica's problem, uh, Amelia? Me? Why me? I I'm not good at speaking in public. Okay, you can, uh, you can say it later. So, and uh, about you, Roberta? Me? But... Uh... Well, if I ask you something, you must give me suggestions. So, if I ask you, please do so. Okay? The facilitator is trying to get the trainees to speak. By calling them by their names, he is creating an uncomfortable and tense atmosphere that is completely unnecessary. So, anyone can tell me uh, what uh, uh, can give me your opinion about Monica's problem? Don't feel pressure, just tell me what you think, what your opinion is. Um, anyone uh, can start? Well, I, I have one suggestion. Maybe the management can help uh, and hire internally, because there are some people that can take uh, Monica's job. So, anyone can give me uh, their opinion? Yes. Maybe a hiring call for Monica's old position could solve it. Do not abuse your position to force people to speak up. People are less likely to speak when being pushed. Remember, you are the facilitator and therefore it is better to act as a moderator. A facilitative leadership style is needed. Avoid taking the role of an autocratic leader. I believe a potential solution could be moving some employees from the accounting to the marketing. Yes, but you are forgetting that these departments require expensive training. Okay, so and if we move some DevOps designers to the marketing just for some while? No, no, no. I think that the best uh, solution to solve this problem would be... In this situation, the facilitator keeps stopping the trainees and imposing his thoughts and solutions. The facilitator should keep a neutral stance and never present solutions his or herself. He should only act as a session guide. I believe that the potential solution could be moving some employees from the accounting to the marketing. Okay, that's an idea. Any more solutions? Moving some DevOps designers to the marketing just for a while. What do you think? 
Well, I must be a neutral party because I don't want to influence you on the decision about this issue in any sort of way. Oh, yes, that is probably for the best. Good, yeah. The facilitator has to remain a neutral party. The facilitator should not give hints or ideas to the group. He, she should get the best out of it. The facilitator must assume the role of a coach or leader. A clear distinction must be made between the role of the autocratic leader and that of the coach leader facilitator. The management decided that we need to build a permanent strategy of regional visibility. And we need to think about problems to prevent this new strategy. So, what do you think could be a problem? Well, I think we should improve the working environment. Okay, any other suggestions? Well, I think we need more light in the office. Uh, light to increase productivity. Okay, anyone else? The facilitator is not guiding the trainees to address the objective. He or she is allowing the trainees to give whatever suggestions, even though they are of little or no relation to the objective. He or she is putting the whole process's success at risk by not guiding the group in the right direction. The management wants to build a new permanent strategy of regional visibility. So we need to think about problems to prevent this strategy, okay? So, any suggestions? Well, I think we should improve the working environment. Okay, that's a good idea, but it's not really to the point of the problem, okay? The objective is permanent strategy of regional visibility, so focus on this, okay? Ideas? Well, now that I think about it, maybe the channel customer adjustment. Yeah, perfect! That's really a good idea, okay? Let's keep rolling! When should a facilitator intervene and when should they not? Keeping a neutral position should not be confused with not giving guidance when the project's success is at risk. If there is a need for intervention from the facilitator, it should be done in a thoughtful manner.